any means. Okay? They, they, I just understand that uh, it is a guru session in the morning. Okay? They just asked me to speak on a subject. Um, honestly speaking, I am I'm not very good with a lot of this uh, jargon uh, of uh, these uh, strategies and you know, growth hacking and all. In fact, I started asking Srini when he asked me to speak on this subject. Zero to million, then, uh, you know, strategies for growth hacking. Ask me what is hacking. All I know is about uh, ID hacking. So, but anyway, that's a cool word that they wanted to use and uh, Lufthansa probably demanded it. So, we are fine with it. But definitely, I'll try to speak what I know about the first part are probably what my takeaways and perspectives. So I am sure uh, uh, there are a lot of entrepreneurs here and some of you are probably successful and in a growth stage looking for the next stage funding. But uh, definitely um, you are all free to take what, what makes sense to you. Otherwise uh, just think that I am trying to be a guru in the making. Okay? So anyway, coming back, first of all congratulations to all of you because you are here when there is a very big match happening outside the, between India and Australia. So that shows that uh, you all are uh, very passionate entrepreneurs. So good luck on that. And uh, let me, I wanted to be an entrepreneur one and I failed uh, two, three times by then. Uh, but uh, there was a goal, our uh, um, goal I've chosen. And uh, at the time when I started my fourth company, I had about $1,200 in my pocket and no job, family with uh, two kids, of course, wife. Um, so when I started, um, I had no choice but to make revenues very quickly because with that kind of low capital, I had, uh, I cannot run too long. That means I have to start generating revenues. So I got into a business that gave me very quick revenues and I did with simple plain oil vanilla consulting services and as I gained strength in revenues when I know that I have displaced my uh, required salary for home I started getting into uh, some specializations that would have given us a value as a company and that will make other clients, uh, clients listen to me when I am speaking about what we do. So in that sense um, um, I would say that in my opinion, in simple words to summarize, to really succeed in a business, you, the biggest and the, uh, th thing I have learned is that you have to keep things very simple. Okay? We don't have to have a lot of language, we don't have to, have, uh, to use a lot of jugglery or whatever you call that, a lot of jargon, I mean. So keep things simple. We should have common sense. We should be very sensitive to the surroundings in terms of uh, what our clients are thinking, how do they feel about our service, in terms of what our uh, employees are thinking, if they are happy. So we have to be sensitive to those things. And then just deep hard work, or rather I would say persistent hard work. So those are the things that actually made a lot of difference in my journey. So can we go to the next slide? So, I just made this statement to say that we have been working uh, very hard for the last 20 years and uh, I only started attending these kind of sessions for the last two years. If somebody tells you that you can become a very successful and make a lot of millions in a span of three to five years, because these days, Everybody is in a hurry, so they want the first idea to succeed. They are looking for mentors, funders, and they get very depressed if they don't get the funding or if they don't uh, get the success in the first uh, entrepreneurial venture. But I can tell you, it took 20 years for me, and uh, that's what the takeaway that you know there is no replacement for hard work. We worked hard to create a value, and uh, if there were setbacks, we worked. Uh, those learnings. And these are uh, some of my entrepreneurial pursuits. See, in the last one, um, my company Gallup Solutions got acquired in 2013 May. That was
the Wall Street Journal article. Okay. So what we were doing was uh, automation testing. We were actually known for our quality and uh, we were one of the largest partners for HP professional services in the US. And of course, there are, I took that photo, I have a lot of Jaji photographs from the US and all that, but I wanted to show that photographs on the right. I started my company in 2003, this was one photo we took uh, in India back in 2009 when I just returned with family and started with a small team. I'll tell you th that, uh, um, you know, these photographs give me the, whatever you call, uh, nostalgia and I, I, I believe that the team was extremely happy to be working with us or rather to be working as a team. Then of course we did some ventures with our films and some of those very early discussions. If you know Dollar Dream's days, I am share on the ground. We did something in movies and we did well later. I'll come back to that later. So this is my current company. So after the one and a half years uh, sabbatical, I again went back to work and started a company called Fusion. Again, we just started with a simple consulting, but I'll tell you about the specializations we did last last time and what we will do going forward. So I want to show you the family photograph. This was my family photograph in, back in 1979. So I was about uh, nine years old. I, I'm on the far right. Those are my brothers, my mother and father. So my father was a small government employee. My mother uh, came from a village. She held uh, only her uh, fifth class. But she was a phenomenal homemaker. She knew how to take care of kids. And uh, she, she always put us in the right path. So I had a good community, being the first kid, we used to talk a lot. So by 1984, I was in 10th grade. I was 15 years old. And uh, I used to talk to uh, my mother about what would she want in her life. And, uh, for some reason or this thing, I, I read somewhere about you know the goals or whatever it is in some Telugu paper, and I came back and asked my mother. So if you want something you like, what would be those? Okay. She said those days, a ceiling fan, not necessarily with all those frills, okay? Because we had one table fan that was that works half the time. Okay? So she said, it will be great if you can have a ceiling fan, and it will be great if I can have a gas stove. Cooking, what do you call cooker? Pressure cooker. Because those days we used to burn that firewood and she used to have difficulty in cooking. So that was her dream. And uh, after a while, after a few years, I asked what else? Okay, because as time progressed, we probably got a, a fan. Or rather, we moved into a home, there was somebody, the owner has already filtered a ceiling fan. And then, uh, of course, she got a cooker. And then she said, how about a TV? That was probably, I'm talking about 14-inch black and white TV. Talking. Nothing fancy about using color TV or all those LCDs and all that kind of these things. Then, her biggest dream was actually to have her own home. That, you know, uh, because that is probably the thing and she would never want anything else later. And in fact, when we bought a home back in uh, 2004, I asked her if you want anything else. She said nothing. She was good. So that, so as a, as a child, I was able to, uh, rather not necessarily I would say I was able to, but I understood what my mother wanted. Because my father was uh, working and uh, uh, mother was still always in touch with the kids. So this is what um, I went through. Then of course, okay. then of course, I knew uh, um, in my father's department, uh, my father always liked an ambassador. Okay? But that doesn't mean he wants it, but his boss had one. So and I had an opportunity to travel in that once or twice. So and I really enjoyed that ride. Okay. This is some of the things that I remembered from my childhood. And of course, uh, those mangoes went put in there. 
uh, anyway, so because I remember going to a mango garden and picking some and really enjoying those. One thing what actually uh, really uh, I remembered and that actually um, triggered some kind of thinking is I went to one of my neighbor's place when I was very young, probably uh, when I was in sixth grade or something. So they gave me horlicks. We always had the coffee, which used to taste better. And uh, these people gave me horlicks, and I really enjoyed I even today remember the exact taste I had at the age of uh, probably 11. So I came back home, and I wanted to, I asked the, my mother next day, can I have horlicks? She said, you, we can't afford it. So, because we had, we were three kids, and uh, what my father makes is not, uh, um, you know, sufficient to have colleagues for all three, or for that matter, for anybody. So, so I understood that you need to have money if you want something. So that's one of the triggers. By the way, I still drink colleagues every day. <laughs> so some of those triggers, to summarize, was um, at one point actually we were asked to vacate our home because we could not pay rent in time. And of course, uh, though I went to the government college, um, my parents sold uh, um, the land for my education and then pretty much, uh, uh, of course, one of my professor was an inspiration to actually make me an entrepreneur and uh, then, you know, it's all one life. So, during the journey, so we, you know, I started reading whatever the books where you are reading, you know, all those, uh, what do you call, uh, Dale Carnegie's and, uh, you know, Power of Positive Thinking, Napoleon Hills, all those, and started understanding that it's one life and we have to do our best and there's no second choice. So I would, uh, for now, pass on the first three ventures what I did. Probably you can talk about it with the QA. But uh, this was my last company. So it's called Gallup, and I started this back in 2003, and that's one uh, after 10 years got acquired. It, it had a good valuation because we built a value, we built a IP, uh, which, uh, a tool that was extremely successful with the HP domain. We were able to serve about 8,000 clients of HP all over the world. So though we were a small team, we were about 100 people in the US and about 145 here. Those are some of the uh, values we followed. Okay. And that's a case. again another small thing I have shown. But I want to tell you that they were all very happy. They were genuinely happy. If you actually look at if I had a better clarity in the photograph, I can I could have shown you better. But I tell you that we were a very extremely happy and fun bunch. We really did things well, we enjoyed our work and uh, we followed these values. See, as a company, we all come with our own values poster and uh, we do that because we try to show it that as a slide to the customer. We're all used to the speaking right? Okay. But I will tell you that we really follow that values, uh, these values. And uh, in every open house we used to have monthly, I used to take up each one of those values and have a discussion on those things. And we used to quote examples how the manager should uh, uh, take those things and really implement and follow some of those things. Okay, so you all know IT and all that. So we did automation testing, we focused on quality. But I will tell you, okay, if I had to do, just to make it least, I would still follow the same values. Okay? So in my opinion, so what business you do does not matter as long as you have some guiding principles and you stick to it, put some hard work to it. Again, have some brains working around to understand how people are feeling about it. Either they are external, that means clients, and internal, that are your team members. We believe in customer delight. If I am selling an key, I definitely want each customer who walks into uh, my uh, shop, and if he eats, let's say, you have a small, you are going driving and you see a, you are hungry, you see a small English shop, Steaming, you stop there, all he gives you is just in and some chutney and it doesn't sell anything. But it just makes you feel that, you know, these are some of the best ingredients I've eaten. So how do you feel? 
what would you do is on that day at least you will tell two or three people if that ET has blown you off. And that word of mouth is so powerful. You really don't need all those marketing and sales teams and jargons and brochures. So that's how we work. We wanted to really make our customers happy. We wanted to create that customer wow experience. Then innovation. How we were able to innovate uh, in Gallup was actually doing that ID. In fact, most of my guys, while working on a regular project, because we are not a big company to invest on a product development company, all this work post uh, their jobs. Okay? People used to put in about 8 to 10 hours beyond their job. And uh, there was a board in our, uh, what do we call it? Development room. So either people were working from there or they used to come back after the work and about the client size and work. I actually wrote what percentage each of those team members will take when we succeed on that particular product. And we kept that board for about three years and we exactly shared the returns in the same fashion. There was a trust, there was a passion, and uh, we delivered. So that's innovation. In case of Italy, what I would do is I would actually get the best machines, but still get to the whatever the most original form it is can be made. Uh, of course, the integrity that's the most important thing. Your team members have to believe that you are honest, and of course, the clients have to believe you are honest, and you you say what you do, and you deliver what you promise, and then. Uh, having fun and being adventurous. We had a lot of fun along the way. And one of the most important thing that helped me actually uh, um, <coughs> go through the thick and thin of our journey is uh, the team member happiness. This is something that we always focused on. We believe that each of our associate will thrive in his job when he is able to learn and when he is able to grow. So we try to provide both the uh, uh, opportunities in terms of constantly looking at what else he could do uh, to go to the next level. And uh, each person that came into my company, I personally knew you, whether uh, they are uh, an intern, then even if they are interns, even if they are a sweeper, I okay, how however simple and ridiculous it would be. Because for me, the most important thing was who is coming into my company. And all I was looking for is good attitude and willingness to and put in the hard work. And I'm okay if they are 20% less smart. Okay. And it worked for me. It worked for me. They were extremely loyal, they were extremely happy. And they were, I was in, very happy because I was able to actually pay after a while more than the market uh, salary to those people. Because they delivered at least 30 to 50% more than what a typical uh, employee produces in a similar atmosphere. So we ensured that they were happy and uh, we provided the opportunity for them to excel. These are some of the milestones that uh, we went through. I don't want to talk much about it. But I want to tell you in uh, this thing. At the end of it, uh, we actually became the third largest testing company after uh, the merger in 2013. Today we are the second largest uh, testing company. Of course, my team is playing a key role in the uh, uh, company. And of course, I took a, I took a break after three months of transition, and I took a, sorry, I mean, after three months, I left, and I took a, I took 18 months sabbatical just to go around and do a few things, and then I just got back to work. So this is about what I did. But as I was talking about, getting back to the zero to million, okay, I honestly believe if you make Real good idea, you can still become a millionaire or build a million dollar. <laughs> Probably you all know in Bangalore there is a company called ID, which is in Kedosa. It's ID Battery that was started by uh, a guy called Mustafa, who is an IM Bangalore graduate. And uh, by 2013, I don't know what's the revenue now, he actually had more than 40 crores turnover. And uh, Sequoia was trying to invest in his company. And all he does is just make Italy those a pattern. Okay. So the same pattern can be used for both. So I believe, so this is just
just about, if we, let's say, we get up in the morning, we go to some small restaurant. Usually, typically what you see is, in a small restaurant, if you go, let's say in Manikonda or whatever, Kukar Pagi or this thing, there are all a lot of, dozens of stores or shops. You, you find Italy, you find Vada, you find, of course, Chetnis and Sambars, and then, usually Puri, Masala Dosa, Upma, and sometimes Mysore Bhaji. So this is the standard menu. You all agree? Yeah. Okay. But I have not seen anybody who makes a real, uh, I mean, what I would say, the best it is um, that like my mother makes. Okay. I'm yet to find anything in Hyderabad that makes a real product. I even had this ID, ID battery. Okay. They're good, okay, but they're not the best. My mother used to make the best things in the world and now my wife makes it. She picked it from her. I'll tell you what we can learn from that at least. Okay? I'm a foodie, so I have to talk a lot about food. Okay? So, you know, to a lot of these uh, urban people and North Indians, they all use rubber to make it least, Okay? If you see the texture, they're all porous and they break pretty fast and all that. But the real way of making it least is you actually use, use a boiled rice, then one third portion you put wood down, you soak it uh, overnight, you grind it, not with the mixture, but the stones. Of course, those days mothers used to use a hand, uh, hand grinding, and nowadays we have the wet grinders that we use. There's a lot of uh, planning, exact proportions. And the timing of each of those uh, what are soaking process and to the texture which, which you actually grind it. You should know where to remove it. If you actually put it in mixy, it actually becomes too uh, thin and actually you don't get the fluffiness in the least. Okay? It may be soft but not fluffy. So if you actually apply it to uh, any company you take, okay. so you should exactly know what where is your you know, what are you doing in the process? You should focus on each of those aspects. I am telling you, if one of you actually pick up just inkling making as your future career, I can tell you, you can actually become a billionaire. Not even a billionaire. So I'm not suggesting you take up India, I'm just giving a simple example of how simple ideas can be turned into a big uh, industries. And you can apply this to any industry, it doesn't matter, your IT or, you know, I might be talking about this thing. I have done the exact same thing when we are actually building an automation testing company. I looked at each process, whatever we are doing. But what we did is we only focused on one. I didn't try to do what up. I didn't try to do masala dosa. I didn't even bother about sambar. I only did one chili, one idli. So if I were to be called, I am the best idli in the world for the quality in automation. So that's what I did. And we focused on only one. Whoever came to us remembered us. They remembered the taste. They spoke about us. So that was the, that's how we gained clients. And we didn't have to have huge holdings, no marketing, nothing. But I ensured that whatever we delivered, the client was happy. So what I would, when I, coming to the, coming back, you can just do one thing. Don't worry about too many things. I try to, uh, I try to do some mentoring for some of the guys. Very intelligent, very good guys, they come and talk to me. They're trying to talk about one. Within 10 days, they're talking about something else. That not, not every time it is even connected to that. Because they're all full of ideas. They want to ask me. They come for something and they start talking about several things. I would suggest pick one, whatever it may be, that you feel that is the best. And uh, having done whatever you over. Stick to it. And there is nothing better than sticking to one and becoming the best in it. So, at some point I have actually opened it, just a key, trust me, just to cater to the, you know, what I would call uh, people who believe that they have eaten the rest of this. <laughs> so, anyway, so, so for me, I mean, if you actually observe a lot of things that you can take away from those kinds of things. In my journey, so what I mattered was, I wrote my goals, we all write our goals. If you really want to be an entrepreneur, either it's an Excel sheet, uh, Businessman or your own personal goals. And uh, yeah. And then I stayed on the course irrespective of what, what was happening. Trust me, I have never met my goals as, as I met them. Every time it changed, 
But well, I was making progress. But I still stay on course. And then of course, a lot of uh, blessings, well wishes, friends, they all helped. And uh, I tried to stay independent so that uh, I could focus on my job. Do not worry about the distractions. I paid my taxes so that I don't worry about somebody coming after me. And then, uh, of course, the most important thing is, uh, of course, I appreciated uh, my colleagues. We all shared good moments. And uh, we respected uh, each of them as individuals, so they really felt good to stay. And we had very, very little attention. The biggest thing what we did is we shared, I mean, we actually shared our returns after the admission with our team members. So, retrospectively, all the dots connect. Okay? So, I might have started with something, but if you really focus on one thing, just do a good hard work, all of these come together. So, whatever the dreams I had, whatever the, uh, you know, wants, wishes, Whatever I had, whether they are, whatever the shape or form it they have written or not, I worked on it. They all came together. It's almost a, uh, and it's a story, and it's a beyond a miracle. I can tell you at some time that you know how things come together when you just stay in the game. So that's all I would say. So I'm sure this is something that what uh, Steve Jobs mentioned in uh, one of the Stanford communication seminars. I wanted to show you, <coughs> during this one and a half years, the bad film, I actually went to my village to open an ashram on my parents' name, the Parvati Ramakrishna, this day. There were some ministers and collectors and IAS officers were there. I tell you the relevance of that. You know, man. This was the ashram that was opened on January 23rd. It so was the design and it's a finished one. That's the logo. So we are enabling the rural kids and youth. Um, uh, with the health services, we have got a hospital, um, a diagnostic clinic, as well as a pharmacy, and then uh, we have got a, a vocational school for the rural students to teach English, maths, and science, so that they can be competitive when they come to the uh, um, a com uh, come to the age of 15. Then we also do the skill development shop. So this is what I do did after the break. Uh, the farm I built in the mango grove because I wanted to eat those mangoes. Okay. Farms actually. And uh, during the break, we went to uh, Mount Fuji in Japan. It was my mother, it was a family and a friend. Um, in 2013, and I have named my company as Fuji because they didn't give me a Fuji eye for the copyrights. So Fuji means basically it's eternal, paramount, and never ending and very sacred. So. I believe the next uh, company will do uh, well. And, uh, so that's what I did in summary. So I intend to follow the same guidelines, keep it simple, and I'll build this one specific niche in the future also, which is BI at this point, business intelligence. And we'll make this company something that uh, all my team members will take pride. So that's the summary. So I believe entrepreneurs will make this nation. And they are the reason the country will succeed. And that's my email. Thank you very much.